Okay, so this is uh, another part in our series of understanding standard deviation. What if we have a population that's normally distributed, right, and we understand what the mean is, the average, and we want to be confident within a certain percentage that our successive tests, as we continue to accumulate samples, falls within a certain confidence level. So, for instance, if we were looking at the average ages of people that came to a, say, a, a movie theater for a specific movie, and we know that the we take we keep taking samples, and we know that the average age is 21.1, and we have a standard deviation of 2.3. That's our that's our sample estimate, and it falls within a normal distribution. So we use a z table. Um, you can use a t table if if you have less than the number of um, you know, then less than 30 samples, because then the bottom line is the tails will be a little uh, wider. But in our case, we use a z-table, and here we have 40 samples. So we're going to we're going to try to find out if we're within 95% confidence with our 40 samples, if the average age of people going to the movies would be 21.1, with a standard deviation of 2.3. So what we're really asking is, how confident could we be within? 5% probability on either end of the normal curve that um, we will fall between, uh, you know, what, what parameter estimates will give us that 95% confidence. So if we plug that in and we use a simple calculation by looking at the mean plus or minus the standard deviation, and the way we came up with this 2.3 is because it reflects the 95% confidence, right? That would reflect the... Uh, two and a half percent on either tail, right? We would be confident with the 95% of the middle of the of the uh, bell curve that we would be correct. And on the tails, that would be where we would feel that we weren't correct. So if we did, so frankly, looking for 95% means that the Z, the Z values have to be 1.95 on either tail. So really what we're doing is we're taking our standard deviation, multiplying it by 1.95 times, and to come up with these parameter estimates. So um, the margin of error is going to be 0.71 when we do that. And the lower limit is going to be 20.38. The upper limit is going to be 21.8. So that means that we could be 95% confident that our samples, if we keep taking samples, not 100% confident, you know, nothing is ever proven with statistics, but as we keep getting samples, we could be confident that the lower limit of our estimates will be 20.38 and the upper limit of our estimates will be 21.8. If we wanted to be even more confident, say 99%, well then notice that this would be a little wider because we'd have to give ourselves a little more room because now we're trying to fall within 99% of the time. If we only wanted to be say 80% confident because it wasn't that important for us to be totally correct in terms of who was coming into our movie theater, well then what would we expect? We would expect that, oh, and the same thing. We would expect a, a tighter margin because we're leaving more room at the tails. So it's really not difficult once you use a calculator. But really, what we're looking for is once we know a sample mean and we keep taking those sample means, and we have a sample standard deviation. Well, how do I find the parameter estimates? In this case, the margin of error at 99% would be 0.93. Of a uh, of our um, it would be 0.93 of our uh, mean, right? It'd be 0.93 of our mean. So 21.1 minus 0.93 and 21.1 plus 0.93 would give us the lower and upper limits of how confident we could be. So we could say with the 99% confidence that if the average, if we felt that the average age of the people attending our movie was 21.1. Well, with the 99% confidence, the lowest it should be is 20.16, and the highest it should be is 21.03. Obviously, if I only need to be 80% confident, then those numbers change to 20.63 and 21.56. So notice 20.16 becomes 20.63, and 22.03 becomes 21.56, depending on how confident we need to be depending on how confident we need to be, right? But if I want to be confident within 99% of the time, 
I have to widen my limits, right? I have to widen my limits. So it's just a way to use statistics again to get a look at. And once I know, again, the number of samples, the average, the standard deviation, and how confident I want to be, well, then I could use standard deviation to come up with lower and upper limits. And the lower and upper limits would give me my, by, 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 by taking the, by taking the um, standard deviation of the mean, I can back into my margin of error. Okay, by pay, taking a standard deviation of, mean, of the mean, I can back into my margin of error. Okay, so that's really basically it. Um, and we'll continue to do these calculations as we move along. It's, uh, it's you know, to, to kind of wrap it up, it's the formula would be N divided by the square, it would be E8, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of samples. You don't have to get that deep into it. You just have to understand that once you use the standard calculator, you're going to get those parameter estimates. And that's it. Thank you.